Hey everyone and welcome back to the Retro channel. Now a couple of updates from the last video, which if you haven't seen, I'll put a link up there and in the description. The power supply is definitely dead. I did try to open it up, but they are sealed tighter than a Commodore 64 brick of death. So those I can actually open. This thing on the other hand, ain't gonna happen. So I don't know what to do with that, but eh. The PAL RF modulator, uh, I did actually recap it, um, which didn't really make any difference to the video output, but now that it's done, I guess I'll seal it back up. At least I know that it's got fresh capacitors in there and they're not gonna leak out and destroy the poor thing. So what I wanna do today is a ROM upgrade, specifically the ROM 4X, which some of you who've got an Apple IIc may be aware of, but uh, it just basically adds extra features, especially in terms of disk drive support and RAM card support. I don't know if it works with the Z RAM board. It's something I can explore in a later episode, I think. So yeah, we'll take a look at that. I also took the opportunity to give the case a good scrub and clean. Most of it came up pretty well. I think the top part of the case is slightly yellowed and it's only after cleaning the top and bottom that I realized that they are a slightly different color but it's no big deal. It's definitely nowhere near as bad as the other one, which is very yellowed. But unfortunately, those two little yellow spots just above the keyboard remain. So yeah, it's not worth retro brighting just for that. So I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The underside of the case did have some pretty bad scuff marks. So I did break out the baking soda, um, which yeah, it just helps to clean out those little nooks in the actual plastic itself. And uh, it's not so abrasive, so you don't actually end up smoothing out the plastic. So yeah, baking soda is always good for that kind of thing. The other thing I forgot to mention in the last video is to do with the integrated WAS machine, the disc controller chip. Now this is the one from the other machine, which wasn't functional. And what I actually did was hook up a five volt supply between the ground pin and the read write pin just to see if I could blow through that short. I mean, this chip was destined for the bin anyway, so it was worth a shot and it did almost work. Now I say almost because signals were actually going through that pin. It wasn't just shorted to ground like it was uh, when I first discovered the issue. So it partially worked, but it didn't work reliably enough to actually create this uh, with ADT Pro with this particular chip. So it, it almost worked, but yeah, I, I wasn't really holding out too much hope, but it was an interesting experiment. You'll see with an actual working chip that the, the voltages there between ground and the read write pin jump between five volts. Whereas the one that I messed with and tried to cook myself jumps between, I think it's like 800 millivolts. So it doesn't quite work. Now you probably noticed the desk is full of stuff. Um, all of this is gonna get used. So we've got EEPROM burner, uh, there's a little capture device. We've got a USB to serial cable for transferring files, obviously a laptop. Um, so let's take a look and see why all this stuff is laid out here. All right, so first things first, I wanna upgrade the ROM that's in this. Um, now to do that, we're gonna need an EEPROM burner like the Mini Pro here and a 256 kilobit EEPROM. Uh, you may also need a soldering iron and an X-Acto knife because uh, there are a couple of traces on the main board that may need to be jumpered or cut uh, depending on what ROM version is already installed. And speaking of which, let's just check out which one is already on there. So there is a simple command that we can just type, which is print, and then we want to peek at six triple four seven. And it says we've got ROM version zero. So that's actually the second ROM version for the 2C. The original one will show up as 255. So I think those traces may already be configured correctly in the 2C. Uh, but let's look at burning this EEPROM first. So like I said, I'm running a Windows machine and the ROM 4X actually requires some Linux uh, command line tools to actually compile it. So it basically downloads 
an original ROM from a reliable source and then patches that ROM. So it doesn't, the download that you get off MG Carrot's GitHub page doesn't actually include the Apple ROM itself because of, you know, avoiding copyright issues. So it downloads the ROM and then applies a patch to it and gives you a binary output. So I've already downloaded the 2C ROM 4X zip file. And the other thing I am using is Git for Windows, which comes with enough command line tools to be able to do this. Obviously, if you've got a Linux box, you're already gonna have the tools there to do it. And I mean, you could install the Linux subsystem for Windows, but that's a lot more involved. This is a really straightforward sort of program to use for this uh, particular application. So let's open up our ROM 4X folder and you'll see that there's a shell script, which now actually just looks like a little batch file. Um, and that's the Git for Windows, uh, just allowing us to run that straight from the, the file explorer. So if I double click on that, it should go ahead and run this bash file and it grabs everything and spits out. It downloads the original ROM and you also get rom4x.bin. Uh, you can also check the uh, CRC or SHA if you're worried that there might be an error with the, um, the compiled file, but I've done this a few times now and it's been fine every time. So, after that, we'll fire up the Mini Pro Programmer and I've already got the right IC set up there. We'll just do a blank check. Make sure our EEPROM is nice and clean. All right, looks good. Let's load this file in, which is somewhere right here. to see ROM 4X. That looks good. Uh, let's program. And then we wait a moment. Cool, that's done. We can close that and pop this out, stick it in the 2C. Better turn the 2C off first. I've obviously got to remove the expansion board, which I really don't like doing because probably only so many times that I'm going to be able to remove this and put it back in before the pin breaks or the socket goes wonky. All right, I'm going to sit that there. <laughs> All right, so on this board, there are two jumpers. So there's W1 here and W2 over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the camera. But yeah, normally on the very first Apple IIcs, W1 will be connected and W2 would be open. Uh, and if you're upgrading to a 256 kilobit ROM, you need to open W1 and jump W2, which this board, it's already been done. So we can simply pop out the old ROM, put our new one in. Hopefully the legs are already nice and straight. Yes, they are. That's it. Now, obviously with EEPROMs, you probably do want to cover up the little window so it doesn't erase itself. But given that this is going to be stuck under all these other boards, I don't think much UV light is going to get in there to erase our EEPROM. So I'm not going to worry about covering up the window. Oh, I think that's back in. Cool. That's it. Let's test it out. You'll notice that it didn't stop at no bootable device or insert disk or whatever. It just it now drops you into the, the command prompt. So that's one of the features of this ROM 4X. One of the other big ones is if you do closed Apple, 
open Apple control and reset. Like I said before, I've actually disabled the need to hit that reset. That will run a little self diagnostic, uh, which takes about a minute to run, I think. Let's see. System OK. That's always reassuring. And just reboot. No bootable device. So it's also looking for any RAM disks or external disk drives that it can boot from as well. Uh, the other little neat function is there is a little menu which you can get to by holding closed Apple control reset and that'll get you, you can go into the machine monitor, reboot, boot from external floppy, all those kind of things, run diagnostics, um, zero out a RAM card. So yeah, a lot of handy little features, very cool little upgrade there. But now that that's installed and seems to be working, let's close this thing back up. There we go. Nice. Not too shabby. Yeah, those two little spots are still there, but yeah, we can live with that. Let's have a look at creating some disks. So I've already made the ADT Pro boot disk. Um, there's instructions on their website for ADT Pro on how to install it, boot from a machine that hasn't got a boot disk already and also create that boot disk. So I won't go through all that. Let's just have a look at the program itself because there is a little issue that I had um, that you may run into and it had me confused for quite a while. I was pulling apart cables and I did actually find a loose connection in one of them, but that was not causing my trouble. So, let me show you what happens. Okay. So we'll boot up ADT Pro off the boot disk. And it's a serial connection. Now, I've got the server running. Open up the serial connection. I did manage to make a few disks, but then I ran into an error. Let's just see if it's going to happen again. It will probably work just fine now that I've said that. We're going to receive uh, Karateka. Karateka? Mm. Look, now it's going to work. Ooh. All right, so it seems to be working just fine. But before I was getting an issue where ADT Pro would say it's timed out. And after that, it just wouldn't work as expected. And apparently it's to do with the serial to USB converter that I've got. Apparently this, I think it's called CH340. Uh, which is like the the chipset that it uses isn't the greatest and there's another one which is the FTDI chipset so if you're getting a serial to USB uh, adapter look for the FTDI labeled ones and this one actually says on the molding of the plastic 340 so I assume that indicates that it's the CH340 chipset so Avoid those because apparently yeah, other people have had problems and I felt it was yeah, maybe related to the actual serial cable or maybe the ZRAM board was causing interference or something. But 
yeah, apparently it's the USB to serial cable isn't the greatest uh, for this purpose or probably for any purpose if it can't even handle this. Anyway, we've got some discs made, so let's try them out. And to do that, I'm gonna need a joystick. Now this is a PC joystick and this here is an Apple II um, mouse or joystick port to PC joystick adapter. So I'll put a link to, uh, I think Jason did a video on one of these recently. It only requires a few passive components and he built his on a little bit of perf board. I actually did the same, but I shrunk it down to size and squeezed it inside the actual head of this, which I haven't done up properly. But anyway, that plugs into our 2C and now we can use a PC joystick. I think these little lips around the, um, the connector are causing an issue because it was working when the case was off, but now they're actually hitting the case and I don't think they're making good contact uh, with the port itself. That's a little bit annoying. Um, that's kind of why I left this open a little bit. So actual ridge of this would fit under those tabs. And I think this has got a similar issue. Oh, so annoying. Just remove the case. We'll just plug this into the back like that for now. We'll figure something out to do with that later. I really want to play Load Runner. Just to, you know, make sure everything works. Yeah. The image is quite shaky on this cap. I think it's just my capture device, but we do have color on a Powell Apple IIc. That's unusual. And a lot of people would have been doing all this in black and white. Oops, I keep getting the buttons mixed up. Yeah. Come on, nope, that's a bad idea. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is analog joysticks. Not for these type of games, like a digital joystick would work just as well. well better because it's it's a you know it's precise the analog one there's no real need for it in a game like this i guess if it's like an arkanoid like a breakout type of game could be useful for that but most of the games i play would benefit from just a plain old digital joystick not this mushy analog business anyway that's just me um, well, just for reference, here's what it would look like. Am I able to plug that in there? No, that covers up the other video output. Yeah, so this is what it would have looked like for most people running a power machine. Um, black and white and that color fringing is just from the capture device. Normally just would have been black and white stripes all the way. Yay. Anyway, that's Load Runner. It works. That's cool. Definitely want, it, want my color back there. I did also clean the volume pot on the 
2C itself because it was a bit scratchy before, but now it sounds quite good. Let's go kick some ass. Bring it on. I forgot how slow everything is. <laughs> oh, shit. No, oh, screw you. Now, of course, the 2C wouldn't be complete without a little bit of Oregon Trail. Let's see how many people are going to break their leg. Get a fever. I'm a banker, bitch. I'm cashed up. Uh, Oh no. Oh, Henry drowned. Sorry, Henry. Oh no, Anna's got the dreaded dysentery. And Anna has died of dysentery. 22.8 feet deep in the middle. Holy crap. Take the ferry. That's cool. That's what we got to do. And it's making good time too. Six days for a bloody ferry. God, it's like being in the 1800s. Emily's exhausted. Psh, need to work harder, Emily. Oh, Emily's died. Whoops. Oops. Jesus, whatever you do, don't hit the shore. My God. It's supposed to... Oh, well, that's pretty. So that's probably about it for the 2C. I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. Uh, obviously a big thanks to John for the 2C and thanks to Jason for the other 2C. I'm sure that'll get repaired one day at least. Um, there is more Apple stuff coming up, specifically something to do with this guy, which is a big yellow and empty mess at the moment, apart from the tube, but we'll come back to that later. I think first up, should probably look at the Atari 65 XE because it's a pro project that I started over a year ago. Um, so it probably deserves to be looked at. I think the Apple, maybe even the Atari can go here in this area. Might do something else with those things there. I know it's not going to be apples and apples. It's going to be apples and well, Ataris, but I'm sure they can share that space over there. So as always, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. Uh, if you really liked it, please be sure to share this video around. And if you want to sign up as a patron to the channel, there's links down below. Again, a big thanks to my patrons and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> this the original color versus whatever's going on here.